So as we look at all of the different compounds, elements, uh, all the th different things that we see and can use, touch, uh, they fall into three categories when it comes to electrostatics. And the first category is insulators. And with insulators, we find that the uh, charges don't move uh, easily. Actually, very difficult. And that's because the outer shells of the atoms are completely filled. And this could be in the case of molecules. The atoms would share electrons with its neighbor to fill the outer shell. Uh, and that's why most, most compounds are insulators. So as an example, we have wood. Wood is a good insulator. Uh, rubber. Salt. Salt is actually a good insulator. Now if you tried salt water, uh, that is a good conductor because it separates the ions uh, in the salt but we can look at pure water. Pure water, no contaminants. It is a good insulator. Now that does not mean that it's not affected by electric charges. Uh, it, it does have a tendency to be attracted to electric charges, but it's just not going to um, allow them to flow in the water. And also noble gases. And those are the gases that are on the right hand side of the periodic table. So the charges can't move. Now you have semiconductors and these are kind of halfway in. The uh, outer shell is half full. And they can move charges move but not easily. It takes a little bit of extra force to get them to move. And the most common ones that we use today are silicon and germanium. And this is the basis for computers and about 99.99% of electronics. Then you have conductors. And the electrons move very quickly. And usually because the outer shell has maybe one or two electrons. And most metals fall into this category. We can think of copper, aluminum,
gold, silver, iron, and a lot of other materials. So all materials fall into one of these three categories. And we'll look at some of the different ways that we use these different materials to analyze our problems when we're dealing with uh, the uh, um, charge distributions.